Hi guys, this is Mike. In this Cinema 4D tutorial, I'll be showing you two ways to use the step effector. We'll be using the step effector, but also the spline effector, cloner objects, and keyframe animation. The way I have this tutorial set up is I have all the files made, so we can jump right into using the step effector. Open a project file lesson 01 begin. Go to front view, and then choose the pen tool. And we're going to make a straight line from left to right. And then press the escape key. Now we're, for the first version of this step effector, I want to use this as a deformer. So go to MoGraph, Effector, Step Effector. And we're going to drag this underneath the spline. Go to the parameter tab and uncheck scale but check position. Go to Deformer and choose Point. Now if you go back to the Parameter tab and you adjust in the Y, you can see that we can deform this, this spline. And in the Effector tab, what we can do is we can adjust this spline. So if you can Control, Click, we can make adjustments to this, this spline using this curve. But you see it's nothing is happening right now. The reason why is we don't have enough points in our spline. So if you click back on your spline and you go to intermediate points, go to natural, and we're gonna bump this up to say 40 or 50. Go back to the step effector now you can see that we can make adjustments on the fly right here in this field. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this in the shape of a human spine. And I, I looked at some references, so I'm just going to kind of eyeball it, trying to get it pretty close. Okay, now that we have that, what I want to do is I want to go back to the front view. And I want to go to splines and choose circle. And we're going to make this pretty small in the radius. So I'm going to go five. And then I want to go to sweep generator and choose sweep. Select all your step spline and circle. We're going to drag this underneath the sweep. So you can see that we have this generated uh, geometry, but we can still go back to our step effector and make adjustments uh, to the curvature of our spline. So now I want to go to object mode and I just want to rotate this, uh, our little sp spinal cord around. So make sure we have sweep selected and go to your rotate tool and we're just going to rotate this holding down shift in 90 and we can get this to 90 degrees. And we're going to rotate this again around to the front holding down shift till we get 90 degrees. Okay, now that we have our spine and our our spinal cord, we're going to bring in components to make this robotic spine. So go to file merge and choose the file spine components. Now if you take a look at how I have this set up we have um, our plate 01 which is our main plate here. But I have nested plate 02 and plate 03. So when we rotate this around, it's going to rotate all the plates. Okay. So next, what I want to do is I want to take our spine components and I want to put this in a cloner object. So go to MoGraph, Cloner, and drag our spine components underneath the cloner. Next, what I want to do is I want to grab our cloner or select our cloner and then go to MoGraph Effector Spline Effector. 
So if you click on our spline effector, you're going to see that we have our spline field. We're going to drag the the spline that we made originally made. We're going to drag that into the spline field. Now you can see that our spine components pop into place on our spinal cord. So it's in the wrong direction. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the cloner and I'm sorry, we're going to select the spline effector and we're going to adjust the up vector. So we're going to try a few of these and to see if we can get see if we can try to get this in the right position. It's still not correct. So what we have to do is we'll have to go to cloner, select cloner, and uncheck fix clone. And then we'll select spine components. And then we can rotate this around if we need to. This looks like it snaps in the position pretty good. But if you need to, you can also rotate this around and get into the position that you want. I'm just going to undo back. So I want to select cloner and I want to fill in this area that we have. So I'm just going to add in count and I'm just going to go as much as I can without intersecting any of the spine components. So it looks like, looks like that's pretty good. Okay, so what I want to do next is I want to animate these plates. I want to have them closing in almost like a protective plate over the, these, say, their robotic uh, vertebrae. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to select plate 01. I want to make sure I'm in the first keyframe and I want to go to coordinates. Now I want to adjust in the pitch to have this shut down or uh, rotate around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to command click, set a keyframe in our pitch and I want to move up in our timeline just a little bit and I want to adjust this to zero degrees in our pitch and then command click to set our keyframe so you can see our animation where it just kind of kind of unhinges hinges off of this point so you can see all our other plates moving at the same time Okay, next what I want to do is I want to animate the plate O2. So select plate O2. And we're going to animate. Um, I just want to make sure that you're in the a right position. So about maybe halfway between each of these keyframes that we set for plate O1. So pl select plate O2 and in the pitch. Command click, move up in the timeline, and we're just going to rotate this around to zero degrees. Command click and set that keyframe. But I also want to back up a little bit in the keyframe, and I want to adjust in the heading. So you'll notice that we have this can rotate this way. So I'm going to command click move up in the time uh, timeline and drag this down until we have like maybe a sort of look like a 45 degree angle if you're viewing it from the top view and I'm just going to command click to set that keyframe so this is how our animation looks so far pretty good so next, what I want to do is I want to do something similar with our plate 03. So I'm going to twirl this open, select plate 03, and I'm going to rotate this down in uh, the 90 degrees in the pitch. 
So I'm going to command click, move up in the timeline, and rotate, rotate this around to zero. Command click. But you'll notice that it doesn't connect or it doesn't uh, line up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move maybe halfway between these keyframes. Maybe uh, pull this out a little bit. And what I want to do is select back and I want to adjust so these plates are uh, joining in the center. Whoops. So you can see this kind of move in. So I'm going to command click in the X position, move up in the keyframe uh, in the timeline, and I'm just going to click until we get into the right position. Now you can also option click and that gives you smaller increments to work with. So let's command click and see how this how this looks. So that looks pretty good. Now the issue is, and this is where this, the second version of our step effector is going to come in, is that it's all moving at the same time. And let me zoom out. And let me just kind of rotate around just a little bit so you can kind of see. All of these animations are happening at exactly at the same time. I want to offset that. And we're going to do that using the step effector. So select your cloner, go to MoGraph, Effector, and then Step Effector. Now that's going to add your effector right into the effector field. You can see that here. If it's not there, just make sure you go to MoGraph, Effector, and Step Effector, and then you can just drag that into the, your effector field. So I want to select the Step Effector. And the way that we can adjust how this animates, we can use this time offset. So if you're in the parameter tab, go all the way down to the bottom and you'll see time offset. We're going to go to say maybe 40 frames. And let me press play. You can see how this animates a little bit more smoothly and naturally. Now we can go up higher and adjust this, you know, say 120. But I feel that it's a little too slow in between each animation of our spine components. So this is something that you can adjust and experiment with but I'm going to go back to 40. So there we have two different ways to use the step effector. One is a deformer and one is to use, which is what we usually use for, for cloner objects. And the beauty part of this is that if you go back to your original step effector that we made as a deformer, and you can go back to this spline, you can still adjust this spline and in this case, we're using a spine, even with all of our other objects on it. So you can animate this, you can um, adjust it after you animated your step effector. So it does give you a lot of flexibility in terms of what you want to do. So there's just two different ways of using the step effector. And I think you can use it in your own projects for different ways. I mean, I use this kind of robotic spine. I just wanted to use something that um, was easily recognizable, but you can use it for any of your own projects, um, for text, for animation. So I, I hope this was something that you could, uh, is useful for. I put the 
project files in the description so you can download those and adjust those. I have the project file begin as well as project uh, lesson 01 end. So you have this file that you can uh, play with and experiment with. So thanks for watching. Bye.